Hello and welcome back to some more Brainworms content. We got a real ripe case today of an upper middle class white woman racially profiling a black man with his kids playing Pokemon Go. You sound like an idiot. Then we'll see what else the good Lord has gifted us with today with a little bit of a twist. We might actually have some context to the consequences being handed down to the perpetrators we're about to uh, enjoy. Here we go. What did you just say? What are you here we go. right now sitting out here doing? I'm minding my own business. What are you doing? I don't think you are minding your own business. <laughs> okay, what do you think I'm doing? I'm not really sure, but I'll figure it out. Okay, you figure it out. I'm probably where I live. <laughs> yeah, I live here too. Yeah, I live here too. I mean, just one look at this woman and she checks all the boxes. Suburban housewife, late 50s, maybe early 60s, wearing a flashy braided belt and spends most of her time shopping at Crate and Barrel and wondering why her husband doesn't really love her anymore. She also lives in a gated community, which might explain why she's so confused. I mean, how did a black person get in my neighborhood? Newsflash, he also lives in that same community. Okay, so I'm probably at my house where I live. Got it. <laughs> what was that? You feel good? Did you, did you do what you needed to do? What the fuck are you doing right now? Now listen, I've been around enough middle-aged suburban housewives in my life to know when they're absolutely turnt up to an 11 off wine and Percocets, and this woman is clearly slobbering right now, just ruined off of her nightly Cope cocktail, and certainly I'm not justifying anything. In fact, if anything, it's probably just exposing her real thoughts as opposed to her being maybe a little more reserved if she wasn't so banged up. I'm standing outside my house. You're standing outside of my house. Why are you standing outside of your house? doing what you're doing. I don't think that's any of your concern, what I'm doing. Well, you're doing something. Uh, why don't you go back to your house? Uh, dude. And I'll be at my house. What is she saying? Why are you standing outside your house doing what doing what you're doing? Uh, I was just walking home from the park. I'm not doing anything. Why do I even have to tell you? Uh, you're doing so you're doing something. You're doing you're being black. That's what you're doing in my gated community. So that's something. You sound like an idiot. Ooh, on the contrary, you miss. You over from your house, standing in front of me at my house, yeah, trying did. to tell me I'm Absolutely, an idiot? Absolutely, I did. Okay, good job. So what are you doing? I think I'm doing none of your fucking business. Rocked it. Here she goes. Where's she going? Bye. Don't even tell me she doubles back. How much time is left in that? Oh, my God. And that's where she came from. Okay. She deadass came all the way into his side of the complex. Like I don't know anything about where they live. Did she, she have can't to get out of the gate? She's like, she can't get out of the gate. He was like in a separate, separately gated part. Chased him all the way down, and now she's. She's oh, too torched God, to even to get out. This is awesome. For obvious reasons and with good reason, this blew up online very quickly and Mrs. Okie Doki got absolutely burned at her pretty high paying job, I imagine. So this woman was the executive director of the anesthesiology department at a place called Change Healthcare. I mean, that's a minimum multi six figure position. This woman's probably been in the industry for years and years built up this career for herself and just absolutely shit all over it by being a complete moron covered in brain worms uh, in this two minute viral clip we just watched. Apparently Change Healthcare, her employer, hung up on Joshua Miller the first time he got in touch with them trying to tell them what happened about this incident was a bit rude until of course, I'm sure they get a hold of the footage and then they pretended like they couldn't touch this woman with a 10 foot pole. We are aware of a video posted on social media involving a former employee. One of our core values is include all. We value diversity, inclusion, and discrimination blah 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 normal corporate fucking bullshit you sound like an idiot now i'm not always a huge fan of people getting fired from their jobs for being idiots on the internet but in this case i'm totally okay with it here we have a dude who left his husky in his car with the windows up in the blistering vegas heat where's the dog at someone called it in thankfully Saliva, yeah, and he was, he was like, he wasn't able to breathe. They come to own us, sir. You the owner of this vehicle? The Mercedes? Just un unbothered. Put your hands behind your back. Oh. Palms together. Palms together. Don't un don't interlock your fingers. Palms together. You have a husky inside the vehicle?
So I don't know what the rules are in other parts of America. I didn't know if like this dude didn't even ask questions. He's just like, are you the owner of the vehicle? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, you're, you're getting you're going downtown. Arrest him. You leave a dog or an animal in the back of a car with the windows up in Vegas heat. You're an absolute degenerate and uh, happily so you get clickety clacked. I imagine it's just considered animal abuse or neglect, which I believe is an arrestable offense. I don't know. But it looks like it is in Vegas, at least. Let's we might follow up on it a little bit here. Any weapons on you, sir? Any ID on you? No weapons, just missing my brain. Mary 23, one in custody. All right. Back to my vehicle. Oh, man. <laughs> Stand right here. Don't move. He was probably just getting done with a little breakfast buffet at the the Go local titty bar. Willful endangerment of an animal. Okay. You realize how hot it is outside? You have the vehicle off, windows up, and you had tape around your dog's mouth. I'm sorry, tape around the dog's mouth? What what is that sick twist? What what the fuck? What are you talking what are you talking about? Now I'm just confused. Was that like an attempt to kill the dog? Like the dog's panting is literally how they regulate their heat. So th that feels like it was an intentional, in which case put this guy away for you know what I'm saying? Put him in the chair. I don't even care. People like this. What an absolute piece of dog shit. Officer feels the same way, which I love. Willful endangerment of a dog, or whatever he said the actual law was. Look at how cute that fucking thing is. Listen, call me crazy, but I would fully endorse the same punishment for this dumbass that lacks a brain. Put him in the back of his car, roll the windows up, buckle him up, duct tape his mouth, and lock that bitch in there and leave him out in the Vegas heat for the rest of the day while that dog goes to the feline titty bar or something. You know what I'm saying? Turn the tables on him a little bit. And if he survives, which would be unfortunate, then you can just then you can just give him the chair instead. We got well, the uh, the taco tyrant up next. On a street vendor in South LA. Police arrested India Dwerson yesterday mm. for the weekend assault that was caught on camera. The 30-year-old faces charges okay. for allegedly attacking the vendor after she got mad because her Why did she get mad? wasn't ready fast enough. Ah, you know what? I talk a lot of crap on this channel about people acting dumb in public. Brain worms, the whole nine yards. People do some dumb shit, but if your burrito's not ready fast enough... I'm flipping that taco stand on its fucking ass. Are you kidding me? You can call me names. You can kick me in the dick. You can even insult my mother, but you don't keep me from my burrito when I'm a hungry man. It appears to show her throwing food on the ground, spitting, obviously, and hitting the vendor. She didn't have a burrito. What else is she supposed to do? Just wait patiently? <laughs> it's just insanity. Anyways, Miss Dwerson got booked and is now being held on $60,000 bail, which is no small sum of money. Stupid games. Uh, stupid prizes, as they say. Rumor has it, to this day, she still has not gotten her burrito. This next one is a classic GoFundMe scam. You just find a homeless guy, you cook up some bullshit scam to get people to feel bad, and they donate a bunch of money, and you get to buy a bunch of handbags and a nice new BMW. One of the reasons why I'm so skeptical of GoFundMes when I see them, because there are so many fucking scams and bullshit degenerate people out there trying to capitalize on people's sense of humanity while well, lifting their money from them and it drives me nuts anyways here's the story as of right now we have that much I can't right see. there 1764 that changes my life right there 1764 dollars that changes my life until a few days ago, Johnny Bobbitt was down on his luck. But this morning, after one random act of kindness, thousands of people are pitching in to help the homeless veteran with a heart of gold. Okay, so this is, I think this is the actual original news story before this was outed as a scam. I'll tell you how the it unfolded. The GoFundMe page set up for him. Oh, yeah. Now nearly $300,000, and that number still climbing. The stunning outpouring of support comes after Classic viral GoFundMe. 27-year-old Kate McClure, who was stranded alongside a highway outside Philadelphia when she ran out of gas. Oh. After calling her boyfriend, she noticed a stranger approaching. It was Bobbitt, homeless with just 20 bucks in his pocket. He told her to wait in her car, and with the last of his money, he bought her a can of gasoline. A Marine Corps veteran and paramedic, Bobbitt, wanted to be a flight nurse. 
These pictures from his Facebook page show him <laughs> as a younger man. <laughs> this is funny. So come to find out that entire story is bullshit. I think Bobbitt being homeless was real, but at some point it shifted from like them just meeting to her creating this elaborate story of him giving her, her his last $20 for gas that turned into this viral sensation with news stations making puff pieces like this. And it absolutely blew up their their for, their uh, GoFundMe campaign. But recently, he's fallen on hard times. Right, so then they give you the this Philadelphia bullshit. The Philadelphia Inquirer quoted a friend of his who says the North Carolina native's life took an unfortunate turn because of drugs and money problems. Sure, well, sure. Okay, no, you know what happened is that group, including Bob, but they all met at a casino, all three of them. This chick, her boyfriend, and the homeless dude, and they concocted this entire plan. And the only reason they got found out is because Bobbitt felt like he didn't get his fair share of the money after it raised so much more than they had anticipated. And him being pissed about that prompted investigators to look into it and come to find out, oh, this whole thing was an elaborate scam. So this stupid bitch gets a year in prison, one year and a day after pleading guilty to one count of theft by deception in the second degree. Her boyfriend, who apparently was the mastermind of the plan, did a little bit more time, or he's going to do a little bit more time, doing 27 months. Anyways, they're complete pieces of shit. Glad they're going to see at least a little prison time. The problem... When you're a scammer is always when you get a little bit too greedy. If that idiot could have just kept his mouth shut and not cried about not getting his fair share, maybe they could have gotten away with the 400K. But instead, they're all doing time with potential more time coming down the line in the future as more federal charges, I think, are being brought against them. Listen, I know we live in a fast-paced world, guys, but it's really not that difficult to stay out of jail and to keep your job by not getting recorded going on a two minute racial profiling spree in a neighborhood that's not even really yours. A little bit of restraint and poise and maybe one less glass of wine and a couple less Percocet and we're all gonna be fine, all right? I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Brain Worms. You know we're gonna see in the next one. I can't wait for it. If you could stand up out of that chair and hip thrust the motherfucking like button for me, that would truly mean the world. I appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Peace. Yes. Thank you.